Good morning and welcome to Morning in the Mountains and Cleveland Stone Road is always closed for the season this time of year. Also Little Greenbrier Road and Rich Mountain Road, those are just a few of the closures in the National Park, but probably the one that affects the most people who would like to visit this time of year includes Cades Cove Loop Road. That's going to be closed all the way through February 29th as they do some work on a bridge and a tunnel in that area. Also look for the closure and restrictions at I-40 at the Tennessee-North Carolina state line. I'm Brad Lovett, and now let's get on with the show. Good morning, it's Kira with Morning in the Mountains, and today I'm here with Dell at Rowdy Bear Ridge. Now, you all have two different adventure parks, right? We do. We have one uh, adventure park located here in, in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, that consists of a, a four-lane tubing hill. Mm -hmm. uh, the tubing hill lane, um, our, the, each lane is 500 feet long with a 200-foot drop, and then we have a hanging roller coaster with laser tag. That is so cool. Now, what about the other location? So at our Gatlinburg location, uh, we have a mountain coaster where you can get up to speeds of 35 miles an hour if you're brave enough to not use the brakes. Oh, and then we have a, uh, uh, a, a really rare hanging coaster. Um, takes you to the top of the mountain. You wind back down. You're tethered. Uh, and and uh, you go over a 90-foot cliff. It's really, that's, that's more of a ride that for a, a crazy adrenaline person. Wow, that, that sounds like it's right up my alley. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Now, are there anything, things that we can be looking forward to? Um, we, we've got to, we don't want to give out all of our secrets, but okay. we have a lot of changes coming. So folks who've been here for uh, this past year and, and Christmas time, New Year's, uh, by next spring, you're going to see a lot of changes coming to Rowdy Bear Adventure Parks in Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. How cool. Well, we can't wait to see them. We're excited. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dale, here at Rowdy Bear Ridge in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and also in Gatlinburg. Uh, now back to you guys. Want more Mountain Fun Life? We are now streaming through Roku. Roku is a device that enables you to stream entertainment to your TV through your internet provider. The starting price is only $29, and you can purchase one either online or through your local electronics retailer. It's easy to use, and you won't have to worry about missing any more Mountain Fun Life episodes. Mountain Fun Life, guiding your adventure. It is morning in the mountains on Mountain Fun Life. Did you get your selfie put away? I did. <laughs> Take a picture. <laughs> selfie. On Mountain Fun Life. Frank Murphy here with Jim Johnson, the Selfie King, and Kira Cup and Brad Lovett. It is Thursday. I want to say a happy birthday to Frank Jr. because he gave me a Roku for Christmas, a new Roku. It's got fancier stuff than my old Roku. Wait, that's, that's why that's you're saying happy birthday? Because he got you a present for Christmas? Well, we got him something for his birthday. What'd you get him? Give Kay. me a second. An Amazon, <laughs> an Amazon gift card. And we took him out to dinner at uh, the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, that's a good birthday. Using the Cheesecake Factory gift card that he gave us last year. <laughs> okay. It revolves. It's a, it's a revolving thing. That's oh, family, so what are you going to do? All right, let's uh, get the latest from Brad. Alrighty. Well, we do have to take just a moment to report the passing of a Gatlinburg K-9 officer on January 1st. Police said K-9 officer Pedro passed away, and the department made that announcement on Facebook. Please remember his handler, Officer Ronnie France, and the rest of the GPD family during this time, the department said. So we uh, always uh, salute our uh, K-9 uh, cop friends, basically. Right. And coming up soon, East Tennessee Fishing Show and Expo takes place January 23rd through 26th. And that's going to be a really good time. The fishing show? It's fishing Where show. Where is it? Uh, fishing show, it's going to be at... Let me find it. Oh, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. It is the, the very best selection of tackle, custom lures, rods, reels, apparel, electronics, accessories. Also, they talk about vacation lodges. And uh, that is going to be <laughs> at this address somewhere because it's on the website here. But uh, 
It definitely is, it is in Knoxville. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it's the East Tennessee Fishing Show. It's East Tennessee. The date. Did you see it's it? It's going to be near the water. Date. I'm guessing. Date is 23rd, it's 24th through 20th. It's actually 23rd through 26th, so that's coming up. It's Next a week. Thursday through a Sunday. That's a week from today. Yeah. It starts one week, week from, from today. today. All right. And it is the 10th anniversary show. And so you'll know that when you get there. Yeah. <laughs> you'll know that when you get there. <laughs> I've actually been to some fishing shows before. Is How did it go? Really? Where was it? <laughs> it was in Knoxville. At the, I don't know if it's the same one or it's not. the Expo right. Center? It's the Expo Center. Yeah. Yeah. I figured it's probably Expo at the Expo Center. Center. The one on Clinton or the one on Clinton I Highway or the one Clinton. on uh, the Expo Center is on Clinton Highway? Clinton Highway Emergence. Yes. Yeah. Clinton Emergence. Right. Yes. That one. So because when we have done a lot of events in my life at mm -hmm. that one and at the one convention center downtown, and the average Joe will get them confused. Mm -hmm. So it's you have easy. to be very clear about which one is which. Yeah. It's yeah. easy for us because we. How many events do we no, do it's, a year? It's easy to get but them confused. Only, oh, that's oh, what oh, I'm saying. Oh, it's easy right. to get them confused. Right. Right. Yeah. So this is the one on uh, Merchants and, and Clinton Highway. Gotcha. Right. Well, now Thursday. Next Thursday will be. First Responders Military Day, mm -hmm. then Ladies Angler Day. Lady Angler Day is on Friday. All right. Ladies. The first, two, the first 200 women through the door receive a free fishing show hat. So get there early, Kira. The first 200 children through the door on Friday yeah. get a free fishing rod. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's, That's good. Cool. That's nice. Wow. And they're also going to have a boat giveaway on Sunday. Oh. That sounds fun. That's what I need. How cool. All right, a boat? Yes, a boat. I would well, like go. That. Go register. I have yeah, an inflatable like kayak. I don't think you want to go fishing in anything that's inflatable. Oh, no. When I go fishing, nah. I don't put a hook on it. I just, like, put the weight on it because I don't want to catch any fish. You don't want to actually catch anything. <laughs> she wants to feed the fish. She I goes really fishing to feed the fish. Wait, 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 wait. Everyone, the everyone stop. You go, quote, unquote, fishing. <laughs> I do. You take a rod mm -hmm. and a line. Mm -hmm. And you put a weight on the end of the line. I do. And you drop it in the water. Mm -hmm. And then I'm guessing at that point, nothing happens. Right. I just like to keep doing that. I did that after school when I was in college. All right. I so that's not actually fishing. <laughs> it kind of is. You're lead weighting is what you're doing. You're... It's therapeutic. <laughs> you're sinkering. It is. You know, it and is And you don't cool. have to worry about not being able to get the fish off the hook whenever you get it back. Cause because the no one, nothing it. ever happens. You're just throwing... Yeah. You're it's just, almost like real fishing, Frank, because yeah. most of the time when you fish, you fish for hours and nothing happens. Yeah. And so and you're just basically throwing a rock in the water, <laughs> but it's got a string on it, so then you pull the rock out and throw it in again. I mean, I could knock them out and they'll just like float up. And then you would feel really bad because... I would feel terrible. You're a vegetarian. I would. Yeah. There's a meme I saw that said, you know, once a uh, fish is caught and then thrown back, uh, does it start talking to the other fish about alien abductions and then all the other fish think it's crazy? <laughs> You know, there's a type of fishing called noodling, right? You've heard of this one, right? Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, I do know what you're talking about. This is where you don't use a hook, you don't use bait, you use your hand. Ew. And you stick it in there, right? That's right. In the water. Oh, no. You do. And, a cat f and you do this, right? You wiggle like you're a worm. Yep. And a catfish will come and eat your hand. Yep. Or by, or, and you take it out, and then you, it, if you're going to keep the catfish, you would then kill it and eat it. But in your case, you could visit with it for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then put it back. That would be more interesting than throwing an, a, a weight into the water and reeling it back out. I think you're right. I think we're going to take care of noodling. Here, here's a funny thing is when I got started in video, um, there was a video that when I worked at the production studio and it was called Girls Gone Noodling. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think I could work here. And I didn't know what noodling was and then I found out that it was what he just talked about. I thought, that is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. We can't top that. <laughs> More of the show coming up after this.
It is Morning in the Mountains on Mountain Fun Life. Hi, I'm Frank Murphy, and I can't stop from smiling because there's a Tyrannosaurus tooth in front of me. <laughs> I'm like a kid in a candy shop today because we're welcoming Chase Pipes. How are you, Chase? Good to see you. From Chasing History, which is your show on YouTube, and mm -hmm. uh, you're in the Smoky Mountain Relic Room. That's all right. Uh, tell us, I mean, I've been there multiple times, but what's the best way to find you? Uh, best way to find us, uh, we've got a YouTube channel called Chasing History, and then uh, our home store is, is a Smoky Mountain Relic room we're located inside of Smoky Mountain Knife Works in Sevierville, Tennessee. You got to go downstairs. Yes, downstairs inside the Knife Works. But it is so worth it because you'll be amazed at not only the uh, the fossils which I want to talk about today, but the historical artifacts from uh, Civil War, World War One, World War Two, just life in general, things that people used in human history. It's everything. If, if you like old stuff, we that's what we're passionate I mean, about. we're going back to stuff. like ancient hominids. We're going back before that. I mean, we're, we, we've got, uh, we've created the largest diversity of history for sale anywhere in one place in North America. And there are very few museums that even have the diversity yeah. that we have. You yeah. know, we've got everything from coarse fossils and stuff like the dinosaur stuff that you see here, all the way back to fossil specimens that are 3.49 billion oh, years old. Man. We've got human history covering literally the entire swath of humanity, including the early hominid species. Yeah. You know, the early man tools of Homo erectus, Homo neanderthal, right. Homo, Homo habilis. We've got tools from those species. See, that's fantastic. You know, and early Homo sapiens as well. You know, Roman, Viking, um, World War II, Civil War. We've and stuff got, that is literally from out of this world. And meteorites as well. Yeah, yeah we've I got a whole it. lot of meteorites. So including the Chubyanins that fell in 2013. You can see that video uh, anywhere, but we've got that actual actual samples. See, that so. is so amazing. Well, it, you brought some, I asked, I told you when you were coming that I am a dinosaur fan ever since I've been a little kid. So you brought actual pieces and fossils. Tell me what you have for us. So here's what we've got. We've got fossils. This, of course, is a T-Rex tooth. Everybody... Yeah, that was really good that you brought that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you a magician? Uh, magic? Yeah, no, I yeah. love this is exciting to me. No. Uh, so what we offer is is we offer artifacts and fossils for sale to the public. All right, and but it sh but to anybody of any price range. That's our main shtick, you know. From something as awesome as a Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth, which was dug out of the Hell Creek, you know, the the T Rex, for example, you know, this this is you know, that's pretty much one of the only dinosaurs that anybody knows. Yeah. But I mean, there are a myriad of other animals oh, yeah. that look almost exactly like it, but aren't. A, t a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but this comes out of the Hell Creek in Montana, and then we've also got bones like this, which is a hadrosaur bone okay. uh, as well. And, you know, we sell this bone for $35 at the shop. Uh, okay, so this is an know, actual fossilized bone. So it is an bone. actual fossilized bone. And, see, and by fossilized means that over time, the, the calcium on the bone is replaced by other minerals. Yes, that's But it right. retains the shape and characteristics yes. of the bone, right? Yes, you nailed it exactly. I'm a so, DJ. But what we, <laughs> but what we do is, is we go out uh, and uh, we pick this stuff up from the actual men and women who are out in the field discovering this history. So over the past 20, 30 years, we've made friendships with discoverers of history. But I also know that you like to go crawling around and we, digging up yeah. holes and oh, yeah. rocks and things. Yep, we do all that. And this is kind of where our YouTube channel came out, you know, because we were picking this stuff up and people were coming into the shop and going, well, there's no way that's real. And it's like, well, it is real because we're getting it from the people that discover it. And, and we're going out there and discovering it ourselves. And one of the things I've learned from Chase Pipes and Chasing History, your show, is that there's more out there than you would think. You know, we like to think, oh, it's so rare, it's only in the museum, and you got to go to New York, or you got to go to Washington, D.C. to see a dinosaur fossil. But your point is that there are huge swaths of land, especially in Montana, private land, where you can get permission, and you can go digging, and you can come back with this stuff. Yep, you can. You know, as long as you're on private property and you have the landowner's permission, you know, you can go and hunt this but stuff But you yourself. do it for us, so we can just go to the store. So I, I do it so you don't have to take a trip to Montana and fight wolves if you don't want well, to. Well, before we run out of time in this segment, show me these teeth over All here. All right, so this is a teeth and maybe from... maybe we might want to cut to that other camera for this, this one. This is a teeth from a species called Megalodon. Now, Megalodon was the largest predatory shark that ever lived. Uh -huh. They were so big that this T-Rex that we've got here, yeah. a Megalodon could have bit T-Rex in half Get in one bite. All right, so that'd be like that in Jurassic Park when the thing comes jumping up out of the water Just, or something like that. Well, it's it's it, similar to that, but All not right. that species. That, okay. That's a Mosasaur. But, uh, but, but Megalodon... 
Megalodon shed, the uh, average teeth sheds around 35,000 teeth within their lifetime. Okay, so it's like finding shark's teeth at Myrtle Beach, except you're finding Megalodon teeth out in the where there used to be water and there isn't anymore. Exactly. These are coming out of the rivers. These are specifically coming out of the Hawthorne Formation, which the Ashley and Cooper River in South Carolina around Charleston cut right through that formation. And we have friends that go out and they make a living doing nothing but diving for this teeth. I love it. Which is really cool. Well, Chase Pipes, obviously i got to have you back to talk more about this stuff. So give me the website, the YouTube channel again. Uh, go see our YouTube channel. It's Chasing History. Uh, and then we've got a podcast, Chasing History Radio. And then go to uh, The Relic Room at um, www.therelicroom.com. Or, you know, just hang a right on the parkway as you're coming into the Smoky Mountains off the interstate. And come in and see us. <laughs> it's absolutely right there. Yep. Chase, come on back real soon. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Chase Pipes and Chasing History. You're watching Morning in the Mountains. More of the show right after this. Parrot Mountain. This attraction has it all, whether you're two years old or 90 years young, with hundreds of beautiful tropical birds and thousands of flowers, plants, and trees. Folks who visited our park have said, I've never seen this many birds in one place. This must be what the Garden of Eden was like, the most beautiful and peaceful place I have ever been. These gardens rival the best, the best value in the Smokies. You'll want to visit Parrot Mountain and Gardens. Call or visit us online. We'll see you there. Right the board. One day closer to the long holiday weekend in January here in the Smoky Mountains and everywhere else. And if you're going to be heading down this weekend, look for temperatures to be above freezing. We should have temperatures near 50 once again in the area near the attractions and maybe in the 40s and 30s up into the higher elevations of the Smoky Mountains. So dress and plan accordingly. You want to bring those layers all the time because you never know when things are going to change. Otherwise, just possibly a chance of a shower, maybe a flurry up in the highest elevations. That's a look at the forecast. I'm Brad Lovett, and this is Morning in the Mountains on the Mountain Fun Life Channel. Morning in the mountains on Mountain Fun Life, and if you're sensitive, do not rewind to the last segment because it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was just weird. All right, I'm talking about the last news segment. You know, the interviews were fun because I do those. It was good. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, let's. Uh, it's Jim Johnson is here. That's what's beautiful about live. I know. Broadcasting. We, we are know. still giggling. It's been 15 minutes practically. We're still giggling about uh, the noodling for catfish, which is how you catch them with your, I assume your hands, but I guess you could use your feet. You just <clears throat> yeah. pull it out and there's this big catfish on your arm. Does uh -huh. not sound like fun to me, but a lot lovely. of people do it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Jim Johnson, Kira Cup, Brad Lovett with a look at the news. And we were talking about the East Tennessee Fishing Show. Which is is that what how we got on this topic? entire uh, line of conversation. Or whatever that was exactly. <laughs> but you want to go to that 23rd through 26th next week, Thursday through Sunday. Giveaways, ladies anglers, uh, Lady Angler Day. That's we what the problem was. Day. Never mention that again. <laughs> because that's what the, that was how we got. That was the off-ramp that took us to crazy town. <laughs> Lady anglers. Kids, kids Fishing Day and the largest selection of tackle custom lures rods. It's at the Knoxville Expo Center. Don't miss it if you love fishing or just thinking about spring, I would All say. Right. Now, both North Carolina and Tennessee have special Great Smoky Mountains National Park license plates. Yeah. And that helps drive improvements all across the Great Smoky Mountains. Now, you can get your Friends of the Smokies specialty plate, and that's both North Carolina and Tennessee, like I said, and then you can even get a one-year membership in Friends of the Smokies. And you can learn more about how to get a license plate and complete the form on their website or on the, the Friends of the Smokies Facebook page. I think in Tennessee, it's a big deal that you can now order these specialty plates online. You used to have to go in person mm -hmm. to, um, you know, the county clerk or wherever yeah. you get your license plate. Um, but I think Tennessee now has that online, at least for a lot of the uh, these charity ones and these yeah. arts organizations. They so. have to go online. You know why? No. Because there's not any more room on the wall. Oh. <laughs> You go in there and it's like, yeah. <laughs> That's true. The whole There's wall is covered plates. in these specialty is. plates. Yeah. yeah. So, that's good. That reminds me, I've got to renew my car registration this month. Thank you. And there you go. All right. 
Brad? Get that done so you can stay street legal. That's what I'm going <laughs> to Street legal. Street legal. <laughs> I like that, Brad. That was good. <laughs> University of Tennessee's Institute of Agriculture is offering a few workshops if you are interested in, if especially if you are a farmer, interested in making wine. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, the keep institute, talking. The Institute says the workshops will be held all across the state both this month and next month, including Crossville, Chattanooga, White Pine, probably the closest to us here, and Franklin and Jackson. And if you do want to attend, you do have to pre-register. The registration fee is $25 per person. And they're going to be teaching participants about the industry and opportunities in Tennessee. Mm. And that's brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Agriculture and the Tennessee Farm Wine Growers Alliance. Now, I've got a friend who makes wine in downtown Knoxville, and it's very interesting. Um, and she showed me how to do it. Not that I'm going to, but I mean, <laughs> would, would you want to go cover that? I mean, I could call yeah, her. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, my sister is actually a corrections officer, and uh, a lot of the inmates try to make their own Prison wine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well from, I'm well aware of read articles about prison <laughs> wine. It usually involves the, the toilet, right? Uh, well, I think they sneak in like water bottles and they put like fruit. Something to ferment. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. That's it's what disgusting. Prison wine. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you can make a video on that too. I was going to actually talk about nice wine. Oh, yeah, we could do that too. <laughs> that you could make at the Blue Slip Winery downtown and then they sell it in Gatlinburg under a different brand name, but it's the same wine. So anyway, all right, good. Okay. It tastes better than prison wine. It's delicious. <laughs> I mean, it's fantastic. <laughs> but go ahead, Brad. All right, so you'll, you'll want to, if, if you're interested, of course, contact Tennessee Department of Agriculture. Not, they will the, get not you the set Tennessee up. Department of Corrections. No, <laughs> no. Not Tennessee <laughs> Department of Corrections. No. <laughs> Why did you imagine that phone call? Can you guys do I, classes on making wine? <laughs> I did not think this segment was going to end up with prison wine. <laughs> I just I didn't see that coming. It sounds like a country song. All right, well, let's just wrap because <laughs> we've got to mention our Mountain Fun Life best deals, which do not involve prison wine in any way, right, Kira? Right, they don't. What do they involve? They involve calling Karina at Mountain Fun Life best deals, 865-978-1152. All right, we'll be back with more of Morning in the Mountains coming right up. It is Mountain Fun Life on Roku, Facebook, and YouTube. I still didn't do it in alphabetical order. On Facebook, Roku, and YouTube. There. When I became disabled, I lost my ability to work. It was then I knew I should have called the Garza Law Firm first. At Garza Law Firm, we want to end your frustration and strengthen your claims so you can have the disability benefits that you need. The Garza Law Firm, let us help. Good morning, I'm Rich Haley, this is Jim Johnson, it's Morning in the Mountains, and we're here to talk sports. Sports! Sports! I think it's Lady Vols time. It's Lady Vols time. They are going <laughs> to Florida tonight. The Lady Vols have a pretty good season working so far. Coach Harper has done a wonderful job, and I have to yeah. stop and think every time I say her name. Because if I say Coach Fast, it comes out Coach Jolly. Because <laughs> I still remember her as Kelly Jolly. But Coach Harper is doing a wonderful job building this team up. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to go to the games there too. I've been to I've been to one Lady Vols yeah. game this year, and it's been wonderful. So yeah. I'm I'm gonna go back. I, I, I went to their home opener, remember, and uh, got a seat right behind the other team's bench. Oh, so uh, right down there on the floor watching them play, and uh, you get to hear all the smack talk. You get to hear all the <laughs> smack talk from the coaches. Yeah, but uh, so it's a good time. Uh, like I said, they will be at Florida. So uh, go Vols, take care of those Gators. And since that's really the only indoor sports going on, I thought we might talk about something more up your alley. A little uh, hiking in the Smokies. Hiking in the Smokies, folks. The weather is beautiful. It's a little brisk, but it's still beautiful. And it's a yes. perfect time to go hiking. There's so much to see up yeah. in the mountains. And there's a lot of so people much. that won't go hiking in the winter. They don't understand that the trails are still open. And it's absolutely gorgeous when yeah. you're up there. It is. So uh, I picked out a few trails that I like, that I've been on uh, summer. I haven't been on these in winter, but uh, just from seeing them in the summer, I'm sure they're going to be very cool. And I'm going to start with an easy one because uh, I like easy. 
Uh, so starting off with the Port Porter's Creek Trail, it's a four mile trail. Uh, a lot of it is either paved or improved. It runs through a small community and there is a nice waterfall at the end of it. And I'm kind of a waterfall guy, so. It's great, I mean. I look for those. Everybody's got their phone now, so you don't have to carry yep. a big, big camera. You can take nice selfies by mm -hmm. the waterfall. I yep. mean, it's, it is beautiful up there. And a four mile hike's really not gonna take you that long. Yep, you know? this one's rated at about two and a half hours, yep. so. Not bad. And that's in the Greenbrier access to the Smokies. So if you want to know where that is, you can go onto the National Park Service website and it'll tell you exactly how to get to that trailhead. Yeah, and it's not a real steep trail either. No, you know, there's, so it's, there's a, some... it's on the lower level of, of you know, hikes. If exactly. you don't want to exert yourself too much, it's a perfect trail to go on. Exactly. Now, if you want a little bit more challenge, there's Laurel Falls. Yes, and it's beautiful. It is a gorgeous. Yeah, yeah I did that one last year. Yep. And I was like, when am I going to get here? <laughs> when you get there, it's like, wow. Yep. I mean, it is. Now, it's beautiful. a 2.6 mile trail, and it's rated as moderate, but the whole trail is paved. So it's a pretty easy hike, and you can expect that to take about two to three hours. Now, if you're up for a challenge, I've got two more for you. Yes, I'm waiting. Rainbow Falls. Oh, my, yes. And that one, there's a 1,500 foot elevation gain. It's a 5.4 mile round trip. And you're doing a little bit of. Maybe, maybe not like this, but you know, you're, yeah. you're doing some, you're doing some hiking. You're doing some climbing. Now they just did a renovation on that trail last year and put in some steps, shored up some sides of the trail where erosion was a problem. So yeah. they've made it a little bit easier to keep your footing. It is a challenging trail though, yeah. but at the end of it, you've got some beautiful falls. And if you wait till it's really cold, they freeze over and it's gorgeous. You get the little, little ice that goes. Yep. It is pretty. It's worth it's it. Very pretty. It's worth it. Yep. Then the other one to talk about is uh, the Alum Cave Trail. I have not done that You've one. You've not done that one? No, okay. I need uh, to do that one. Rainbow Falls goes up one side of Mount Lacan, yeah. and Alum Cave goes up the other side. And the Alum Cave, it's really more of an overhang than a cave, but it's this massive chunk of rock overhanging the trail that forms a little sheltered area. Now, the cool thing about it is that during the winter, the water that normally drips down in the summer freezes and you get these beautiful icicles everywhere. Ooh. The scary thing is those icicles tend to fall off every now and again. Be careful. So you wanna be careful when you're going up there. Speaking of being careful, if you're hiking in the winter, you really want to make sure that you're ready for any change in weather. So you wanna make sure to bring plenty of water and uh, weather appropriate clothing. Yeah, and, and get you one of those little thermal blankets. They're real, yeah. they, you never know. You never know. Always be, and we're both military guys, so you got to take it from us. You, you yep. always want to be prepared for anything. Right. And as much as you can be. Yep. Without so carrying a hundred pound rucksack on your back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I already carry my 50 pound rucksack. So, so the other thing I want to let you know is that the Smokies National Park does have a couple of ways for you to check to see whether these trails are open and whether you have access to them. There's a Twitter feed. It's uh, twitter.com at Smokies Roads NPS for National Park System. And there's also a phone number that you can call 865-436-1200. And that is our sports for today. Wow. So this has been Sports on Morning in the Mountains. I'm Rich Haley. He's Jim Johnson, and we'll see you later. We now have our own magazine. Our prints are located in shops, gas stations, hotels, ballparks, all over the Smoky Mountain region. We offer a concierge service for cabins, hotels, resorts, and individuals. A portion of any of our services or ad space may be applied as ticket value to the cost of any service or ad you book through us. Contact our marketing today for a free initial consultation. Email marketing at mountainfunlive.com. You've been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. You have to carefully monitor your health for the rest of your life, and you have an increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Cut. Type two, take two. Action. You've been diagnosed with a new purpose, to fight for the amazing life you made for yourself, to look that risk of heart disease square in the face and say, no, not me. You've been given a new opportunity to live. Get started at nodiabetesbyheart.org. It is morning in the mountains on Mountain Fun Life. I'm Frank Murphy, Jim Johnson, Kira Cup, Brad Lovett. You know, in your earlier segment, I didn't think we were going to talk about noodling 
I didn't think we were going to talk about prison wine, <laughs> but this whole show has been off the rails. So happy birthday, Frank Jr. Um, <laughs> I wonder, though, if we could have some kind of prison wine competition, like for April Fool's Day oh, or, yeah. or something. There's probably some one of those contests we could do where we have to make prison wine and then bring it in. What is it? It's called... Um, Pruno, I think. Pruno. 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 It'll, oh, Pruno is dangerous. Hunter yeah, is telling us that Pruno is, is not good for you. We could do it over at the Alcatraz. Yes. That'd be great. Oh, yeah, I bet they know all about it. We'll uh, talk to, give them a call. We'll get to a, a prison wine demonstration. Maybe we can have like a section and have like the Alcatraz prison wine competition. Yeah, but you watching, you better not go to prison and make it there. We don't want to kill anybody. Yeah. I just figured there's got to be a way. We also don't want anybody to go to jail. No. Yeah. No. All right. Well, I don't know. There's, there's, there's probably a better way to make homemade wine than that. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but I think if we had a, some bread and a, some fruit and some water or whatever you'd have, and just we could let it sit here on the desk for a few weeks and see what happens. We did that in Desert Storm. Oh. I didn't say anything about it, but yeah. <laughs> Okay. Prison wine does right. not taste fine. That's all, all right. I'm saying. Well, then let's not do it. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll need lots back. of sugar. It's Friday Eve, which means we'll be back with a Friday show coming up tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you tomorrow on Mountain Fun Life.